بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. Uh, this session we will start with Surah Al-Mutaffifin. Now, Surah Al-Mutaffifin is one of the challenging surahs with regards to its type. Uh, is it Meccan? Is it Medan? Now, there are four opinions on this matter. One opinion said, and this is the, the opinion of the, I don't want to say the majority, but many of the scholars of tiski, the tafsir. Uh, they say it's Meccan. Suyuti said it is the last surah to be uh, sent down in Mecca. Another uh, set of scholars said, no, it's Medinan. Uh, a third group said, well, it is Meccan, it is Medinan, except for the last eight verses. These are Meccan, but the rest are Medinan. Some said, and this is the fourth group, they said it was not in Mecca, nor was it in Medina. It was on the way between Mecca and Medina. Uh, however, uh, what makes it uh, more to be, according to the statement of the majority of the Mufassirin, Mecca, uh, is that it consists of very short verses and this is if you remember when we spoke about the uh, style of the Meccan and the Medinan surahs and verses we said that the Meccan ones were short verses as opposed to the Medinan ones being generally uh, longer uh, the Meccan ones usually address the day of resurrection the consequence of those uh, who deny it uh, it also includes the uh, the destiny of believers and non-believers. It also, uh, in, the, in this surah, it mentions the mockery of the Quraysh against the poor believers towards the end of the, the surah, and uh, some of the false lies they said about the, Qur about the Quran. And this is what makes one believe that the opinion of the majority of the scholars is the correct opinion. Its name is Al-Mutaffifin. Uh, some uh, called it Waylun lil Mutaffifin, according to the uh, first verse. The reason uh, of revelation is uh, a matter of uh, difference of opinion because uh, the narration which is used uh, is disputed. Is it Hassan, which is sound? Hassan is lower than Sahih, right? Or is it uh, inauthentic altogether, right? And this is because had it been uh, agreed upon uh, regarding the, the, the authenticity of this uh, narration, I mean, had they agreed upon the authenticity of this narration, then it would have resolved the first issue of it being Meccan or Medinan. Because this narration, Ibn Abbas said, when the Prophet ﷺ arrived to Medina, the Medinan merchants were the worst people in measure. When they measure, when they measure to sell you, they were the worst people in measure. Some of the scholars said they learned this from the Jews. But regardless, they were the worst. This is their description. And then Allah Azza wa Jal sent down Wailul lil Mutaffifin, this surah. So they became the best people in measure. Now, had this been agreed upon to be authentic, then there is no space for argument. There is no space for dispute or difference of opinion. If this was a sound, agreed upon to be a sound or authentic narration, Khalas, it solves that it's, it's a Medinan surah. But since they don't have an agreement on it, its authenticity, that left space for uh, the difference of opinion. Allah Azza wa Jalla in the beginning verses of the surah addresses a, a practical problem that was widespread in Mecca as well as in Medina. The Meccan merchants were the elite of the, they were the rich people of the community. 
right? And they were very unjust and unfair when they dealt. Uh, let's, uh, يعني, if, if you know what mutaffifin means, Allah Azza wa Jal says, I, I will continue then, let me just recite the, the first verse. وَيْلٌ لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ wu To those who give less than due. Right? What happens when this is widespread? Problems within the community happens. It spreads diseases, social diseases, diseases amongst people. And that's why Allah Azza wa Jal warned against this using the word Wail. Now, Wail, as Ibn Abbas said, and this is again a difference, a matter of difference of opinion amongst the, uh, the scholars and the companions. Ibn Abbas said, it's a valley in Jahannam, in hellfire, which has the pus of the people of Jahannam run through it. Right? So Allah Azza wa Jal, if this was the case, he's saying this is going to be for those who have this practice. Who give less than due? As Saidi Rahmatullah Alayhi said, it's a, it's a word usually used to threaten people with punishment. A third group said, it means ultimate destruction. Regardless of which one of these three meanings it holds, it's something terrifying. Allah Azza wa Jal is launching a war against those who give less than due. Now, for us believers, as Al Imam al Dhahabi said in his famous book, Al Kaba'ir, when the word wail is used for something, it's an indication that that thing is one of the major grave sins. It's one of the kaba'ir, it's a kabira. Right? Now, Allah Azza wa goes on to give the description and details of those mutaffifin. الذين إذا اكتالوا على الناس يستوفون وإذا كالوهم أو وزنوهم يخسرون. Who when they take a measure from people, take in full. They demand it in full. But if they give by measure or by weight to them, when it's reversed, now it's their turn to give to others, they cause loss. Sheikh Al-Uthaymeen said, that in principle, the uh, tatfif, which is extracted from mutaffifin, the description, the adjective, uh, is usually used in financial transactions or measures of weight. But it holds a much broader sense. It's a concept that's much more comprehensive than that. He said it applies to anyone who wants, when it comes to his rights, his due, he wants that in full, but when it's his turn to give back or to pay others back their due, he gives less. And then he gave a couple of examples. Rahmatullahi Ali. He said, mean that is, he said it's just like the husband who demands his rights from his wife in full. But when it comes time for him to give her the rights that are due to her, he falls short. See, there's nothing wrong, wrong to demand and expect your full due, whatever that is, right or money or measure. What makes it wrong is when you don't deal likewise when it's your turn to pay others back their dues. It's pure, pure oppression. Another example he gave was uh, a person who works, an employee who works and he doesn't give his job his full self, but at the end of the month he expects his full salary. For example, in modern time, example, 
You see a, a person who's sitting in the office, who's being, or he's expected to be doing something related to his job, right? But he's got Twitter on, Facebook on, WhatsApp on, right? This happens a lot. That's why some companies block the ability. It's a network, so they block the ability from the uh, employees to be able to reach Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, right? But they can't block your WhatsApp on your phone. So shaitan will find a way to get you busy. So you're spending your work time that you're being paid for, for something that's not benefiting your employer. But at the end of the month, you expect your full wage. Now one case that makes this permissible and not included in Wailun Lil Mutaffifin is that when the employer himself knows, but he doesn't mind, then it becomes okay. But if he does not approve of what you're doing, and you're sneaking behind his back, or behind closed doors in your office, or whatever, right? Then it's not allowed. Do they not think that they will be resurrected? What made them dare to refrain from giving people their due in full with regards to the people in, uh, of uh, the Quraysh? Is that they did not believe of resurrection. See, just to remember that you will be resurrected and held, held accountable for what you're doing is enough to prevent you from doing that. If a believer remembers that he will one day die and then be resurrected and be held account for not giving people their due in full, he will refrain. Uh, and the believer, when, when the believer sins, is imitating the uh, disbelievers who denied resurrection by action. Meaning, his heedlessness of that day is what blocked his mind to think about the day of resurrection. So he's acting as if he will never be resurrected and held accountable. Sheikh al Uthaymeen said, if the one who thinks about uh, abandoning an obligation or committing a prohibition, remembers the day of resurrection before he does so, it is impossible that he will do that. He said, but it is unfortunately our heedlessness that makes us forget the day of resurrection. لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ أَنَّهُمْ مَبْعُثُونَ Do they not think that they will be resurrected? لِيَوْمٍ عَظِيمٍ For a great day. A great day. Great because of what's going to take place during that day. The terrifying events that will take place. The terrible events. Make it, these make it greater than anything that you can think of. Allah described that day. In Surah Al-Hajj, in the beginning of Surah Al-Hajj, Allah says, Ya ayyuhal nasu attaqu rabbakum O mankind, fear your Lord indeed. The convulsion of the final hour, the day of resurrection, is a great, meaning a terrible, terrifying thing. Yawma. Yawma tarawnaha tadhalu kullu murdi'atin amma ardaat. 
On the day, so this is a description of that day. Some details of that day. How scary things will be. To what extent fear will reach. يَوْمَ تَرَوْنَهَا تَذْهَلُ كُلُّ مُرْضِعَةٍ عَمَّا أَرْضَعَتْ On the day you see it, every nursing mother will be distracted from that child she is nursing. So she is in the middle of nursing her child, but because of the events of that day, the terrifying events of that day, she becomes... Heedless of that child, she neglects that child. And every pregnant woman will abort her pregnancy. Uh, Ibn al-Qayyim said, the term is not just pregnant, hamil, right? It is an indication that she is advanced in her pregnancy, right? Because a pregnant woman can be two weeks pregnant. But that to Haml is a description of a woman who's advanced enough that people, when they look at her, they see that she's pregnant. So a woman who's pregnant will abort that child. And you will see the people appearing intoxicated while they are not intoxicated. So what's going on then? Why, why is all of this happening? These are serious matters. I mean, the mother neglecting and abandoning her suckling infant is something that is serious. No mother does that. People as, uh, appear to be intoxicated, drunk, and because of their behavior. So what is going on? Allah tells us at the end of the verse, وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ But the punishment of Allah is severe. People's fear of that punishment the introduction of which they can see from the events taking place on the day of resurrection, right? They know if this is happening now, then the punishment we were told about in dunya will actually take place. And if this is only the introduction to the punishment, we don't want to see the punishment. يَوْمَ يَقُومُ النَّاسُ لِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ The day when mankind will stand before the Lord of the worlds. They will rise, stand up. Some scholars said they will rise from their graves to stand before their lords so that each will take their recompense. Allah didn't mention how they will rise from their graves. But he described them in another surah. He said, يَوْمَ يَخْرُجُونَ مِنَ الْأَجْدَاثِ سِرَاعًا كَأَنَّهُمْ إِلَىٰ نُصُبٍ يُفِضُونَ The day they will go out of the grave rapidly, as if they were racing to a goal. There is an objective. Some said it was a pole that's... That people are racing to reach. Who's going to reach it first? This is how they come out uh, of their graves. And uh, at the time of the message, uh, for the people of Quraysh, standing up for someone indicated his lofty status and rank. And it showed respect to the one you're standing up uh, before. Uh, and... Allah Azza wa Jal is telling them that that day you will stand up in respect and in submission and in admission that I am the Lord of the worlds. Ibn Umar 
uh, narrated that the Prophet وسلم, said, and this is mentioned in the book of Imam al-Bukhari, he said, one will stand in his own sweat until it reaches half of his ears. Abu Huraira said regarding the length of that day, and this is in the book of Imam Muslim, the Prophet وسلم, said that day will be as long as 50,000 years. Uh, <coughs> a couple of points to conclude with. This being a Meccan uh, surah, and yet addresses uh, the issue of uh, transaction and measure and giving people their due in full. Uh, in a Meccan surah, which is usually uh, which usually does not address these issues except in very general terms uh, is an indication uh, that this matter was very widespread in Mecca as well as in Medina. Uh, it's a warning to the Meccans uh, who were opposing the message of Muhammad wasallam, telling them that this religion is not just rituals it's a comprehensive way of life that will touch every aspect of it, including your trade and business. And though Islam was very weak in that stage, the Meccan stage was a very weak one, a lot of secrecy in the da'wah, right? There is no state, no protection, no army, no nothing, nothing established. Yet, it addressed an issue that needs a government to organize it and enforce it for it to become, uh, or for that practice to be prevented from the community. And another issue is that this practice in Mecca was done by the rich ones who were the merchants who used to oppress and wrong the, the, uh, the poor by not giving them their uh, due in full. But the poor had no power to do anything except to accept this mistreatment, ill treatment, and just take less than their due. And when Islam addressed them with this, they knew that their status is being threatened and that this Islam is a code of life, I'm going to lose my lofty rank within my community. I'll just be like any other person. And this is why they were so vicious and aggressive in their war against uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in his message. And finally, it is an early warning to the Muslims to refrain from this. And since this was the last Meccan chapter, it's a message to the Muslims who were already in Medina to refrain from such a practice. It is to threaten them and to warn them against uh, this practice. With this, we conclude this session. Subhanakallah, alhamdulillah, ashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. أستغفرك وأتوب إليك